friends of the media, friends of the community, supporters. It is heartening for us to gather here today in front of the controversial development of 105 Kiefer Street. And we stand here in front of the railway workers and World War II veterans commemorative monument square, commonly known as the Kiefer Triangle Ceremonial Square. Today is heartening for the community to come out, to stand up together, rising up to save Chinatown. And it's heartening for us to see amongst us not only the most affected Chinese organizations because of this rezoning, but also many leaders from the Chinese community who will also be speaking to you and for the, com for the community to come together to speak out. Amongst us are the Chinese Veterans Association with their representative World War II veterans whom have fought for Canada under challenging circumstances and they have fought for the community and even at their age now we are so heartened that they are coming out to fight once again to save Chinatown I'm David Choi your MC for today I am the former chair for the Vancouver Economic Development Commission and I'm also the chair for the Chi Tech Kong Association with two building locations here in Chinatown. Our association represents five Chinese surnames. Now, let me present to you the first speaker. Our first speaker is Mr. Kelly Kong, the president of the Army, Navy, and Air Force Veterans of Canada, Pacific Unit 280. Mr. Kwong. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kelly Kwong. Uh, I'm the president of the Army, Navy, Air Force Pacific Unit 280. Uh, the Chinese Veteran and Railway Workers Memorial Square is, is a tribute to our uh, Chinese Canadian veterans who fought for Canada and the railway workers who were our nation builders. The Memorial Square is located next to the 105 Kiefer site. This sacred location that represents the cumulative years sacrifice of Chinese Canadian desecrated exclusion cannot be finished. In this year, uh, in this year of the uh, Canada uh, 150, it has just been just 70 years since the Chinese Canadian community earned the right to full citizenship with our service for Canada. A city we consider it soon should not per permit condo towers that are out of place that promotes the image of Chinese Canadian culture and reduce the cultural asset that represent our heritage and heart earned rights we are here today to oppose 105 keepers to defend this important place of dignity, history, and respect. Our two veterans, World War II veterans, come out today. Since that, uh, 70 years ago, they fought for uh, Canada. Now today, they fought for save the Chinatown. These two World War II veterans. One is the Bing Wong, one is that Tommy Wong. But 93 is 94. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Mr. Vincent Kwan. He is the executive director of the Dr. Sen Yat-sen Classical Chinese Garden. The garden is right behind us that you can see here. Mr. Kwan. Thank you. 
the Dr. Simerson Classical Chinese Garden has always played a very important uh, sorry, the Dr. Simerson Classical Chinese Garden has always played a very important cultural role celebrating Chinese culture with the local communities at the same time to work together with local communities to celebrate intercultural understanding and dialogue. We are also a well-known Vancouver major tourist attractions. We understand what tourists want to see when they come to China. They are looking for an experience of cultural heritage. They are looking for an experience of um, that they, they, they want to see through um, the unique aspect of the cultural heritage asset that we have in Chinatown that we have recently been designated as a national historic site. Now, what they are not here to see is a large massive condo um, that towers the garden, that towers various important cultural assets in Chinatown. We are very concerned about um, this resuming applications that will negatively affect not only that particular site, but the entire Chinatown as a whole. Um, if we look at uh, the Chinatown as a very important cultural heritage district. We are not against ed, uh, op, um, development in, in any way. We believe in growth. Uh, we believe in the, growth, uh, the importance of growth for Chinatown, but we know uh, that any development needs to be right for Chinatown. Uh, we need to have a long-term commitment, a long-term view on what is uh, the right form of growth, right form of development for Chinatown by balancing economics, cultural and social aspects. So uh, this is a very important moment. We hope to have the support of the community um, uh, as a way to make sure that Chinatown as a whole can be vibrant by having a long-term balance strategy. Thank you, Mr. Kwan. Next, we have a long-term Chinese community leader who has worked very hard to continue to preserve Chinatown, to enhance Chinatown's values. You'll all recall long ago, the community, along with this leader, fought hard for a highway not to go through Chinatown so that Chinatown can be preserved as it is today. So next, I would like to call up Mr. Fred Ma, the president of the Chinese Society Heritage Building Association and the director of the Ma Society. Mr. Ma. Thank you, David. First, let me state that we are not opposed to development. In fact, we welcome development, development that is smart and culturally appropriate for Chinatown. Part of Chinatown is a national historic site. Along Pender Street, there are many heritage buildings, as well as buildings named as Canada's historical place. In addition, Chinatown was placed as the number two most endangered historic area in Canada by the National Trust. We oppose 105 Kiefer rezoning application because the height and mass is out of character to the neighborhood. It will overshadow the historical uh, district with its many cultural significant assets. It, was na it, was, it has no Chinatown characteristics in its design. The public benefits trumpeted by the developer are not gifts compared to the rewards they will receive from the rezoning. The developer should not gain three additional luxury penthouse through rezoning in exchange for little benefits to the community. The 25 units of senior housing will be paid for by $7.3 million of your tax dollars. For $7.3 million, we can get many more housing units in rent by renovating the heritage building that already have residential accommodation. The Ma Society of Canada building, Ma Society of Canada building on Pender Street is under renovation. 
with an estimate cost of $2.6 million, with $1.2 million of grants from the City of Vancouver and BC Housing, will be able to bring 36 units of SRO to modern day standard. Compared to $7.3 million for 25 units and $1.2 million for 36 units, is this a benefit to the community? I doubt it. In Chinatown, we have residential units in many of these heritage buildings. The community would benefit much more if the $7.3 million of, of, were put into renovating these rental unit, res, residential units. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ma. The representatives today in standing up for the preservation of Chinatown is truly cross-sectional and, cru and truly generational. Our next speaker, Doris Chow, is the co-founder of the Youth Collaborative for Chinatown. Doris. Hello. Youth Collaborative for Chinatown has been animating public spaces in Chinatown with intergenerational activities right here in the Chinese Veterans and Railway Workers Memorial Square in the heart of the neighborhood, surrounded by legacies that were hard won by generations of Chinese Canadians before us. As an intergenerational and cross-cultural neighborhood, our activities attract people of all ages from 9 to 90 and of all cultural backgrounds. Youth volunteer endless hours in recognition that the reason why we are here today and why we still have a Chinatown community is because of the Chinese Canadian veterans and we stand in solidarity with them here today along with the seniors who live here and our peers and future generations against 105 Keeper to protect our cultural heritage and sustain our living community. Thank you. Thank you, Doris. Next, we have David Wong, an architect and former staff member of the City of Vancouver Planning Department. Mr. Wong. Thank you, Mr. Choi. First, I wish to acknowledge we're in unceded traditional territories of the Musqueam, of the Squamish, and the Tsleil-Waututh Nations, the original stewards of this land. My name is David Wong, Wong Hoiting. As an architect and as a former staff at the City of Vancouver Planning Department, I can identify several issues with the 105 Kiefer rezoning application. In the old days, a community contribution was exactly that. The developer paid for and built the community space with their own dollars. It is troubling to learn that the social component of this 105 Kiefer proposal is entirely funded by taxpayers through BC Housing. In this case, there is zero dollars presented to the community for helping the developer on their pro forma. The proposed cultural amenity space that reverts to potentially full market rental rate in just one short decade is not in the best interest of the community. In addition, there are no community amenity contributions for the rezoning, which would have been highly unlikely back in the old days when I was with the City of Vancouver Planning Department. The neighborhood deserves much more in return for helping make concessions for this applicant. Many of us in the profession wonder why the HA1A zone was recently allowed to be considered at 120 feet when the original intent of the zoning and policy was to respect and preserve community assets, assets like our sacred Memorial Square and a Dr. Sanyasen Garden and Chinese Community Center. 
Chinese Cultural Center. One of five kefir has not earned the additional height nor massing. It is not right and it's completely unfair. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wong. I'm asked to also say a few words in my role as the former chair for the Vancouver Economic Development Commission and also as the chair of the Chitek Hong Society based right here in Chinatown. The 105 Kiefer project does not provide any additional value to enhance the economic, cultural, and social context of Chinatown. Condo towers like 105 Kiefer in this historic area have proven that they don't economically revitalize the area by bringing new clientele to traditional businesses. Instead, these new homogeneous condo towers simply gentrify and tax Chinatown of its unique character that tourists, film industry workers, and others in the innovation economy values. Further, the additional three stories, the increased height limit, and the so-called additional benefits of social housing are in fact paid for by you, the taxpayers, through BC housing, economically, culturally, and socially, 105 Kiefer is not a good project for Chinatown. And now, we have a very important speaker, Miss Jenny Kwan, Member of Parliament to which Chinatown belongs, Vancouver East MP, Ms. Kwan. Thank you very much, uh, David. Thank you for the very kind uh, introduction. Let me uh, first uh, acknowledge the First Peoples, the Musqueam, the Squamish, and the Tsleil-Waututh people for allowing us to live, to work, and to play in your unceded traditional territories. We're gathered here today to do important work, and I want to acknowledge them. I also want to acknowledge the veterans who are seated behind me, standing behind me as well, for the vision and dream that they had. We're gathered here today, why? Because our community is threatened with a development, 105 Kiefer Street. Why is this a threat to our community? If you think about the development and what's in it and what's being proposed, you have to ask this question. How does that development contribute to the character and the history of Chinatown? How does it contribute to the preservation of historic Chinatown? And I think that you will see, and why we're all gathered here today, the answer is that it doesn't. In fact, it does the very opposite. It threatens the history of Chinatown. It threatens the future of Chinatown. The veterans, so many years ago, went out and fought for what I could enjoy today. The right to stand before you as an elected official. We were not allowed to vote. We were not even recognized in any way, shape, or form. But because of them, we here and I stand here before you as an equal. That's what they fought for. And, and there is something really wrong that we have Second World War veterans that are here today fighting, fighting to preserve that memory, that history, and their contributions. This project, 105 Kiefer Street, if approved, will be 118 feet high, 12 stories. It is an enormously massive building that will overshadow this beautiful memorial square that honors the first Chinese Canadians who came and fought for our rights. 
This is our 150th anniversary of our country. Without the railway workers, we may not have this anniversary this year today. They were instrumental in linking British Columbia to the rest of the country in building that railway. They suffer immensely. They had the most dangerous jobs, the hardest work, the lowest pay, and they toiled and they risked their lives to build this railway so that today we can stand here and celebrate our 150th anniversary. This, this building will cast a shadow, it will loom over this monument behind me. It will overcast what I call the oasis of our city, the Dr. Sonia Sen Gardens. Where else do you find in North America a gem like that in the heart of the city, in a very busy intersection of the downtown east side and Chinatown? Right here in our own backyard. And this building will cast shadows and will loom over it in an unbelievable way. Likewise with the Chinese Cultural Center that is just right next door. So why do we need to fo go forward with this project? I would say that we don't. I know that people will say, but what is the future of Chinatown? You have challenges. I get it that we have challenges, but it does not mean to say to overcome those challenges that our effort would be to erase that history. We survived fires in the early days of the city. We, the city burned down. Chinatown rebuilt and rose from the ashes. We suffered and were attacked with a riot because of racial discrimination. And we managed to survive that too and live to tell the story another day. And then there was the freeway. There was an attempt to drive through the heart of Chinatown, erase this community with the freeway. And the community gathered and said, no way, we will not let this happen. So today, 2017, we're fighting redevelopment pressures. And I have to tell you that we can stop this redevelopment. And I am calling once again the City Council to listen with your heart. Listen with your heart to the people, of the voices of the people in our community. It's a unusual alliance, really, in, in many sense, that we're all gathered here across the spectrum, across generations, and as the MP for Vancouver East, I've heard from many, many people who said to me that you must stand up to say no to 105 Kiefer. And I've had people who are not from the Chinese community who came forward and said exactly the same thing to me. People from Gastown said that to me as well. For example, residents in the Gastown community came and said to me, you know what, this cannot happen to the history of our city. So we're gathered here to say no. Now, I want to offer this. People will say, but if it doesn't go ahead, what will happen? The decline of Chinatown will continue. Let me say this, that there are people out there who, if we want to, taking the easy road to revitalize is about redevelopment. Bringing in luxury condos is sometimes always the answer. But we know that that is not the solution. And it doesn't provide you the important work and options that's available to us if you shut out this opportunity today with the approval of 105. I would also say this, that all levels of government need to come and be a partner in this. The federal government just this year, we just unveiled a plaque just a little less than a month ago, right? To recognize historic Chinatown as a national treasure. That plaque will mean nothing. It will mean nothing we don't do actual work to preserve Chinatown and to pres preserve its history and to add to that history and to add to that culture. So I will call on the federal government to invest in our community. We can purchase this site as one option and then have it develop in such a way that meets the needs of our community. We can do a land swap as another option to have this kind of development go somewhere else that fits that narrative of those neighborhoods much better than what it does here. There are options before us. So the answer, so the answer to this is very simple. If you can dream it about the future of what our community looks like, it can happen. 
Our veterans dreamt that. They went to war and fought for it with conviction. So today is up to us, the next generation, to walk the walk with our veterans who risk so much, who suffer so much, the railroad workers who lost lives, to walk with them, to honor their history, to honor their contributions, and to save Chinatown. It is possible. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny, for that eloquent uh, speech and uh, for speaking up and standing up for Chinatown. Let me share this. Another heart that's representative of the community who could not be here today because he has just passed away this year. A friend of Chinatown, a friend of the community, a friend of the city, architect Joe Wei and I and leaders of the community had conversations specifically about this site that we're talking about today. Within a month of his passing, and he spoke passionately. As you know, he made tremendous contribution to the various preservation and buildings in Chinatown. He spoke to us passionately about this ceremonial square that we're standing on about his and the community's aspirations and dreams of helping to preserve Chinatown and helping to create this symbolic square into something better for the community. And his vision and plans, which had many community leaders' agreement, was to expand this ceremonial square, which includes the lane that you see to the left of me, and includes 105 Kiefer and the adjacent buildings. Let that aspiration of the community and Joe Wei's vision, which has proven again and again to be valuable in the development and preservation of Chinatown, not go unanswered. The city has continually talked about preserving the cultural values of Chinatown. And yet, we see here going ahead about this rezoning, which the city will vote on coming Tuesday. Does this development and rezoning preserve the cultural value of Chinatown? I think you see it and hear it today the community has come up to tell you no. So I would ask members of the audience, friends of Chinatown, and our friends in the media to help us get the word out so that the voices of the community are heard. And I want to especially acknowledge three of that World War II veterans who has come out for us, and that's Bing Tom, Tommy Wong, and Neil Chan. We are very, very appreciative and grateful for your past contributions and for coming out again to help save Chinatown. Let their contributions since World War II, when Canada said they have the right to sacrifice their lives for the country, but did not have the right to vote for China, to the right to vote in Canada. Let that voice that were not heard 70 years ago, and now they come out and they're giving you a message to help save Chinatown. Let what they have to say be heard today, and the community voices be heard today. Thank you very much. Now, in ending, I would just ask for your forbearance for two minutes before we go into a scrum. We're going to have two group photos, one with the square here, 
and one with the 105 in the background. So just give us two minutes and then you can go into the scrum and talk to people uh, who you would like to. Thank you very much. this group here not to move. Thank you. 